So the process of emotional surrender, to me, at least as someone who's a facilitator of this and an avid practicer, practicer of this, is so, so profound that often 90% of the time people are shocked how simple it is. In this video, I want to be talking about the anatomy of a breakthrough because it's not always what you think. Now, I don't know what you think when we're referring to a breakthrough. Here we're talking about an emotional life breakthrough. Now, what it might be for you is different what it might be for me. So when I say breakthrough, I mean a inner transformation that makes space for something new in your life. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the anatomy of a breakthrough. And more importantly, we're going to be talking about how it's not always what it seems. Because even as someone who's like, for example, I've spent a fucking long time meditating, right? When you spend so much time meditating, you sort of develop an intense internal awareness, right? But even then, I'm always surprised. So we're going to be looking at the the nuances of a breakthrough. So that way, if you've had one, you can see it, see it clearly, because the more you see it, the more you see it, the more you see it, and it's really exciting. But more importantly, we're gonna be looking about how the act of surrender itself is a breakthrough. So if you don't know what surrender is, why not? <laughs> um, but surrender is the process, it's the very natural process in which we have looked at, now we've systemized, um, that happens within us all, that is the process of fully finally surrendering to feeling what you're going through. Now with most people, what happens is, is they're often like, they're feeling lonely. They're not, for example, they, they're feeling something negative, they're feeling lonely. When they fully then surrender to that feeling, finally, people might say lonely, feeling lonely is bad. I say you didn't feel lonely enough. Um, for example, with loneliness, then that person finally gets to feel their shit, feel and surrender to that, then it's allowed to pass and move on to its next form. And what I mean by next form is, well, we have a rule for this. Any surrendered, any emotional things that are surrendered, any emotional breakthroughs we have is actually a process of getting to that next form. So feelings and situations that are bad and horrible and fucking depressing turn good. Feelings that are good turn great. Feelings that are great turn amazing. And we all know at least to some extent, and I say this to at least to some extent because there's always a rule that shit happens, right? But at least to some extent, life is going to be a reflection of us. There are some people out there that are just, their head is in the fucking dirt, right? But for a lot of the relationships that you have, for example, they'll be a reflection of you. Like, we will bring out parts of them and they will bring out parts of us. But it's often that we paint the relationship with, our, the, with the brush that we have. Change the brush, change the relationship. Happy people have happy relationships. Sad people are often so used to sad relationships that if a happy relationship comes, a, comes along, we often reject it. So what is the anatomy of a breakthrough? It is that. It's a release. It is, it is very much a release of the emotion. It's a feeling of relief. And it's a feeling of feeling lighter. I say this, I key word on that lighter, because I will often joke about the idea of enlightenment just being that, the feeling of feeling lighter. Negative emotions often have a heavy burden on us. That feeling of sadness, guilt, depression. We call them lower emotions because they are lower, they are heavy. They, are, they will feel heavy, they will drag you down, they will slow you down, as opposed to Lighter emotions, upper emotions, more positive emotions. There's a spectrum. You see this? Lower emotions, higher emotions, negative, positive. When they start to switch over to that positive side, what ends up happening is, is they feel lighter. We move beyond it and we are released. Now, here's the thing, right? Good majority of the time, what I'm here to do... Sorry, there's a cat making a noise. Cat, there we go. <laughs> The, the, the cat is, has taken a, has a, a very exciting idea that it decides to try and tear up the front door just for attention. As soon as you give the cat attention, it's like, oh yeah, it's fine. <laughs> like, oh, thanks for the attention, everyone. Um, so where were we? So the, the concept, the breakthrough is the enlightenment. It's that letting go. But what we do here, right? So a lot of life coaches will, will tell you, or like if you see advice online, they'll be like, do this thing, 
You gotta do this thing to practice a positive behavior. Now that is, there's nothing wrong with that because some people need that. In fact, through my surrender process myself, sometimes I'm like, oh look, I need to practice some things, practice some, some positive behaviors. But as we surrender, as we heal, as we grow, as we process our emotions, because surrender is an act of processing, as we grow, the interesting thing to remember is, is that we are making space. We are healing the heaviness that has burdened us, so we are making space in our life for new things. What are those new things? Us. Making space for new understandings, making space for our fucking soul to express itself, making space for our true self to come forth. For example, I would argue with most people in life, we know what we have to do, we know what we've got to do next, but there's either two reasons why we don't do it. One, we are fucking burdened by those things that slow us down, or two, it's so, we are so numb, we are so dull to it that we can't even fully understand. So it's like with people, like I'll be working with someone, we'll do a surrender, and it's like the answer will be so obvious to them, but the answer was always obvious to them. The answer was deep down inside them the entire time. We were unable to, uh, we through the process were able to help that person uncover their own answer. You know, so it's like, I truly believe for a lot of life situations, we know the answer already. And the answer might be to learn from someone else. The answer might be to, to ask for help. The answer might be, no, you got to figure this out for yourself. Because sometimes that's the case and there is no shame in that. Now the cat is tearing up a box. Let's flip it around. He knows he's on camera, so he stops. Anyway, so when we say make space, sometimes what happens is, is as you surrender something, you might have an idea, you might have a breakthrough, you might have this revelation. Often that revelation is good, but what I care about is the flow on effects, the effects, the, the subtle behavioral changes that happen as consequence to that. For example, someone struggling in a, in a relationship, we might surrender to their, their issues, right? They might fully feel their issues and then they might talk to their partner, say, hey partner, I need to feel safer around you. I could have told them what to do that, but them coming to the conclusion themselves is so much more powerful than me telling them what to do. That's the whole process, is when we, we make space for the answer. Now, there is a story, because I asked my, my partner, what am I gonna do this video on today? And she wanted to tell me, tell me to tell this story, and I already sort of planned to, but it was great. Uh, this outfit I'm wearing, I just bought today. This shirt, just bought today. I have countless times gone into Uniqlo and tried on shirts like this and felt like none of them fit. Countless times. This time, it had been such a long time since I've been in there. Do you, why? In Melbourne, we had lockdown. If you don't know what Uniqlo is, Uniqlo is a uh, Japanese brand of clothing. Mwah. I like it because you can find the same thing in every color available. <laughs> um, but this time, why was it that I go into Uniqlo, try on a shirt, and it fits amazingly? And not only that, I can get any size, or not any size, any color, and it looks amazing. The shirts hadn't changed, but I had changed because I had finally processed quite a lot of negative self-belief and negative doubt and negative and pain that I had towards my, my body image and my appearance, and I am losing weight so slowly that it's profound. That's the thing. Everyone wants the big, quick breakthrough, and you can do that, but if the emotional foundations are not there, you will spring the fuck back. So this time, I've decided I'm gonna lose weight slowly. But more importantly, I'm gonna love how I look. And so trying on a new shirt, a shirt I tried on maybe five times before that, every time deciding that there was something wrong with me. Now I try it on and things are different. But that's fucking life right there. The answer is, there, but we are the ones blocking it out. There was a time once, such a beautiful thing, a time once when I was helping two people very close to me figure out why when one person calls the other, it goes through, but when the other person calls that one, it doesn't go through. 
And that person who wasn't receiving the calls was struggling. They're like, I feel lonely. Why have you abandoned me? I look at their phone and without even realizing they had pressed the block num the block block this caller button. So I pressed unblock, there you go. That's my job as a coach, by the way. But to press the unblock button. But that's what we do. We block this shit out because we are not ready to handle it. Because there's something we need to do first. And life keeps bringing us back to the same shit. So, how do you know if you've had a breakthrough? An emotional, deep emotional breakthrough? Well, usually in the moment you'll feel some relief. You'll feel better. You might have a realization or you might have a tingling sensation. You might be like, oh my God, what the fuck was I thinking? The Zen Buddhist word for this, Satori, um, awakening. Uh, I remember I heard Eckhart Tolle talk about this once and it just fucking hit in me. I, like, it's like the glasses were on your head the entire time. Um, like, you know, you're looking for your keys and you realize they're in your pocket or you're looking for glasses, you realize they're on your head. It's like that. And it's like the change is so profound because it's so small. It feels like it's been your whole life like this and you just now have woken up. Um, the second thing is, is you'll start to notice changes. So first you'll have some, some feeling and maybe not, it's not always thing, but if it's a big change, it'll be that. The second thing you'll notice some changes, right? Uh, it might be behavioral changes, it might be different changes. You might just find things happen for you or with you or someone else does it for you. It's beautiful. This is what we call a synchronistic thing. So I'm trying to keep this video under 15 minutes, so I'm going to talk fast now. A synchronistic encounter, a synchronistic thing. Synchronistic is like the perfect simultaneous action of events. So you might think that you want to you wanna meet someone and then suddenly your friend is like, hey, let's go to this bar. You didn't have to do it but your friend then decided to go out with the bar and invite you. Synchronicity. Synchronicity. If you want it, chances are someone else wants it, and the events will coincide in a perfect encounter. Now, here's the thing. The more you notice synchronistic events, the more you notice synchronistic events. You start to see how everything in your life specifically, because sometimes shit happens, you know? Fucking coronavirus. No one expected it to happen. Shit happens. The perfect synchronicity of some events in your life will coincide and create an a, thing, a thing, right? It will come to you or you will go to it, but it does not matter which way. Some jerks in relationships, I say that because the people are like, they knew it takes me. It's like, get over it. You text them, they text you. Doesn't matter who does it first as long as it happens, right? Um, the third thing is, so that was the thing like, yeah, the behavioral change, I think. I can't remember the third thing. The breakthrough Basically, it'll start flowing. And more often than not, that's my job as a coach is the fanfare. Like the fanfare meaning like the, the excitement behind it all. Because I'll be working with someone who's been fucking single for years or like this in relationships or struggling with their, their family for years or like feeling depressed for years. And then we'll, be, we'll do surrender and they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm fine now. Like, um, I just live my life. And it's like, hmm. You don't say do you not notice this? And they're like, yeah, but I'm doing all this exciting things. It's like, because you let this energy in your life, because you let the new things in your life, often we don't even notice the change. We don't notice how big things were. And so we, we miss out on the understanding of where it came from. Because then people relate it. It's like, well, I just started doing this thing. But doing that thing was inspired by the breakthrough. So the breakthrough inspired the change. In my latest course, which I've, um, the, the full, the link is in the description, Unlock Your Desires. We talk about the anatomy of change. People often focus on actions. I want to, ch uh, results. I want this result. So then they focus on the action, right? But more often than not, more specifically, people who are more awake and realize that actions are uh, created by thoughts. So they try and change their thoughts. You motherfuckers realize that thoughts are dictated by feelings. Change your feelings, evolve your feelings, surrender your feelings, grow. Your feelings will change, so then your thoughts will change, your actions will change, and your results change. If you want to learn more about that, the full course is in the description. Uh, I think it's 60 US, um, six days or six weeks, depending on how you want to do it. It's just six audio coaching sessions, as if I'm coaching you directly, but through your ears. And... Um, and as always, you can if you haven't already booked it, you can book your free call. I'm still currently making a coaching model that's a bit more affordable. 
because uh, I work with some top people and I gotta go!